Shut the fuck up. Today at Tiger Drop Films is a special day. We're going to celebrate two years of my channel with a comparison between the two Tigers of the Like a Dragon series, that being Tiger Saijima and Futoshi Shimano. My only request for you are to sit back, relax, grab a beer, and join me in talking about the balls out man and the big bald man. Thank you guys. Legend has it that the tiger is a beast with comparable strength and wisdom to that of a dragon. And wouldn't you know it, the first true Yakuza boss in the series is Shimano during the funeral fight in the original game. However, he's anything but a noble tiger. The fact that the first Irizumi reveal is on a guy that is built like Mount Everest while he's surrounded by hundreds of Yakuza is truly a sight to behold. Of course, his Irizumi is none other than a tiger, which I find fascinating considering this was the first game. It's also notable how in both of Shimano's boss fights, he has his tiger Irizumi on full display. He has no qualms of showing his true nature. Shimano's your classic scary Yakuza boss, or at least what you might expect going into the series firsthand. I'm glad the series was able to squeeze out more Shimano screen time. With 0 and 2, that being the scenes in the past. This guy is one of my favorite antagonists in the entire franchise. That's 100% because he's deliciously simple. Villains don't have to be complex in the first place, because above all, they have to be a threat. And Shimano is a lethal threat. While his moveset in the original or the Kiwami version isn't the hardest, once you get an understanding of it, He's still a great boss fight, coupled with a role in the story that chews the scenery every time he's there. I love how in the original game only, in his second fight, he'll attempt to grab Kiryu and slam him against an incoming speeding car. And he'll try several times throughout that fight. When you combine his narrative role as the big brute that can back up his bark with an amazing boss theme, and sprinkle that badass Tiger Irizumi on top, then you know you've got a badass villain. An extremely memorable one at that too. But why exactly is that? Well, when reflecting on the series, you realize that Shimano is one of the few characters to directly harm Kiryu and Majima alike. Shimano was responsible for Majima being tortured even more after losing his eye to the Shibata family, and would go on to be the reason Majima had to stay in Sotenbori with Sagawa and couldn't go help Saijima in the assassination attempt. I want to point out how Majima's title of the Mad Dog of Shimano sticks around for the rest of the series. In Yakuza 1, Shimano was responsible for pushing Nishiki down a path of darkness, and Shimano was the guy who also killed Kazama. He even worked alongside Kazama back in the day to remove Jinwan Mafia and other foreign groups from Kanrocho. Yet, he had no problem killing Kazama years later. I see Shimano being killed in the same scene with Kazama to be a bit poetic, especially considering Tarada was the one to put the tiger down. Karma from the past ended up biting him back. These events related to Kiryu and Majima show how much of an impact Shimano's had in their respective legacies. And I see Shimano as a whole, as being a definitive example of how strong the Tojo clan was in its prime. You could say that the passing of Shimano and Kazama truly was a turning point in the Tojo clan's history. Now let's talk about Shimano's boss theme, that being Pray Me. I like the Kiwami 1 version a lot too, but it's hard to beat the original's full-on aggressive nature. But the Kiwami 1 does still keep the spirit of it intact, it's just a more of a techno version, while the original 2005 version is pure early 2000s goodness, and that's why I prefer it. Now Pray Me has a few themes similar to it, such as Northern Menace and Evil Itself from Classic Yakuza 2, but what all of these themes have in common is some sort of incoherent rap that was jumbled together and put into a badass rock theme. 
it's aggressive and violent and I think it really helps lend itself to the series' origin as just being a kick-ass franchise. So above all, Shimano's got a badass theme, memorable locations for his fights, and an overall design that stands out. And I gotta add, that in the Japanese release of Kiwami 1, his second fight includes Receive You Reborn, so there's some food for thought. Even without the Tiger Irizumi in mind, the image of a big Kingpin style villain that has no problem shouting what's on his mind is going to be someone you don't forget. For all the other quote unquote big thug opponents throughout the series, none have been able to mimic Shimano's stature as one of the last pillars of the Tojo clan. And they probably can't eat fugu like him. <laughs> Now let's discuss Taiga Saijima and his Irizumi. I'll directly compare and contrast him with Shimano's Irizumi in the third part of the video. But let's talk about the Balls Out Man, who was our first pseudo return to plot beats in Yakuza 1. And as a side note, it's interesting how people's first exposure to him might have been all the stock footage from Yakuza 4 that were flashbacks in Yakuza 0. Taijima's story is a tragic one to say the least. He's a man who's lost more time in the joint than Kiryu. That's not even including the other two times Taijima returns to jail in the series. That being the beginning of 5 and 6. And as I'm sure we all know, the tragedy truly comes from the fact that his original time spent in jail ended up being pure wasted time as the infamous rubber bullets plot twist was revealed. Even with the rubber bullets in mind, Saijima still fully intended to kill those 18 men, and there's no doubt that he still led to their deaths, even if he truly didn't shoot them directly. So I think this revelation is just part of the soap opera that is the Like a Dragon franchise. And it's like pouring salt into the wound that was Saijima's time in jail. Yakuza 4 has three scenes that I think encapsulate Saijima's journey and inner pain with feeling like a ghost that walked out of 1985. These scenes are his reunion with his original patriarch, Sasai, then his breakdown in front of the crowd and purgatory, and lastly, the only couple of hours he got to reunite with Yasuko before her sacrifice. They're all heartbreaking in different ways but they all culminate in Saijima dealing with a crash course of painful reunions. Sasai ended up being a dead man walking on the streets, only able to say Saijima's name very briefly. The fight in Purgatory against Ivan Abramanovic ends in Saijima refusing to kill him for the pleasure of others, simply because despite 25 years passing, Saijima still remembers the faces of the men he shot. Then there's Asuko, aka Lily, a stepsister of Saijima, but for the both of them, they were siblings of blood. This bond is further explained when Yasuko reveals that Saijima once tracked down her bio dad so she could receive the proper kidney donation. Now, this event showed how much Saijima was willing to look out for her. And this gives us insight to how and why Saijima ended up joining the Yakuza in the first place. You see, he joined the Sasai family to help pay back Yasuko's biological father, who was a member of, well, the Omi Alliance. It's depressing how Yasuko was unable to visit Saijima in prison since she was denied every time. It makes that 25 years even crueler. And what's worse is that this led to Yasuko resorting to murder in order to pay back Katsuragi so he could apparently prove Saijima's innocence. And we all know how that ended. Her tragic death may come across as vexatious to some players and I can understand why. However, on a recent playthrough I cared more for her and Saijima's bond this time around. While I wish we got to see a cutscene of them reuniting when they were captured, by Katsuragi, the fact that they weren't able to be reunited for long is similar to the little time that Kiryu had of Kazama and Yumi in 2005. 
Another similarity to the first game is Kiryu and Nishiki being reflected in a way with Saijima and Majima, as in two brothers having a fight after being years apart due to prison, and with one of them advancing their career as Yakuza while the other couldn't. I brought up Yakuza 0 earlier because I found it interesting that the game gave more context to Kiryu and Nishiki as young bros being, well, bros, while Yakuza 0 didn't give any of that to Majima and Saijima. Save for the stock footage I mentioned earlier. And you know, Saijima does get a little bio in Yakuza 0 if you go to the notebook, but alas. Another weird thing is that Yakuza 0 does not have Yumi in Kiryu's story, not even for a little bit besides a mention, and also not having Yasuko and Majima's. If I could change one thing about Zero, it would be giving those two characters some kind of little appearance. I just think that's because they are so pivotal to their stories later on in the series that I think Yumi and Yasuko respectively could have benefited from that. Going back to Yakuza 4, the fight between Saijima and Majima is a true highlight. It's built up throughout Saijima's part in Yakuza 4 as much as it is in Yakuza 5. The duel between Tiger and Mad Dog. Two men who had their Irizumis inked at a very young age and their Yakuza careers. Different remixes of Receive You are played in the fights in Yakuza 4 and 5. They highlight that despite the drastic amount of time that's passed, the buried bond between them can be unearthed and reborn. Saijima and Majima become inseparable once again. And this idea is really paid off well in Yakuza 7, Gaiden, and Yakuza 8. Now unlike Shimano, Saijima was able to escape the bad karma of his past but not without many struggles and losses. Saijima's tiger represents a sleeping beast that's had to be reawakened time and time again, much like the dragon of Dojima. For all the time that's passed, Saijima's been able to stick to his absolute willpower and bear his fangs while on his own tree of wisdom. That's how I would describe Saijima's tiger Irizumi. Compare this to Shimano's, where his tiger's face is looking completely towards the left, and we're unable to see both of his eyes. The balls out man, on the other hand, <laughs> we can see both of his green eyes. His tiger has a bit more traditional coloration that you'd expect from a Bengal or Siberian tiger, with a darker fur coat and a darker colored nose. Then you look at Shimano's and his tiger has a bright pink iris and pink nose with a fur coat that is much more yellow in color. For lack of a better term, Saijima's tiger has a small mane protruding from the side of his face and ragged fur down the chest like he's seriously been through some rough times. Perhaps this indicates the age that has worn him down from being in prison for so long. Then you look at Shimano's tiger that is much more pristine in his fur coat. Both of these tigers are in similar poses. Shimano is on a rock, while Saijima is in a bamboo tree. Shimano also has sakura flowers around him, and his entire Irizumi extends over his shoulder and to his forearms, much like Majima's. This is called Makiri, from my understanding. Perhaps Shimano's Irizumi represents a combination of Majima's and Saijima's respective designs. Since Majima ended up in the Yakuza longer than his oldest brother, he happened to have a much larger Irizumi. Saijima's reign was cut short, so all he has is a noble tiger that holds much raw power. To summarize the tiger's designs, they both represent clearly defined beasts of tremendous power. These are creatures based in real life, and they're able to go toe in toe with dragons and demons. Much like these other creatures, tigers can be both positive and negative. It's ultimately up to the wearer of their image. Shimano took the route of a classic Yakuza boss, being bold and intimidating with a side of scheming destruction. Saijima took the heart of the tiger with verisimilitude, even if the 18 min hit was sandwiched between much nobler deeds of his. 
such as saving Yasuko when they were teens, or surviving long enough to see the Tojo and Omi fall apart. Saijima's got the ferocity of a tiger and the heart of a kitten. No matter what, tigers are a crucial part of the Yakuza series. I think I would know. My channel is named Tiger Drop Films after all. <laughs> oh man. That wraps up my comparison between these two legendary characters, and I hope you enjoyed. To celebrate two years on my channel, be sure to check out my playlist of over 20 Yakuza videos. There's bound to be something there that you'll find interesting and worth your time. Last year I did a massive video over the history of the Amon clan and it's done wonders for my channel at over 10k views. I'm so proud of it and I'm grateful for all the response and feedback it's received. So last year was the Amon video and this year was the two tigers of Yakuza. And I can't wait to see where else this channel goes. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, and be sure to Tiger Drop your problems away. Stay tuned for more. Tiger Drop Films, out. Shut the fuck up.